this is Ace with Rock Revolt Magazine. I am here with uh, Janet Gardner and uh, Justin James, who are about to go out and uh, do some dates and tour uh, tour in support of the uh, new Janet Gardner solo album release that's going to be dropping on the uh, 18th of August. How are you guys doing today? We're doing great. We're doing great. We're really excited and can't wait to get out there. Yeah. Yeah, you guys got a few dates set up just for the just for the month of uh, September. So, uh, you guys going to be doing any more? You guys just kind of hitting a few Midwest and East Coast dates just the month of September. Is that just scheduling deals, or is that just all you're ready to do right now? That's just scheduling. That's all that's come in so far. But our agent is working on some some other surprises. So, we're looking forward to seeing what else he comes up with. <laughs> right on, right on. Now, um, so this is your first solo album after all these years in Vixen, because of course everybody knows, you know, Vixen knows, you know, Janet from there. What made you decide to just uh, branch out and do a little solo gig? Just want to do something a little different? Well, it just kind of happened by accident. You know, Justin and I moved into a new house, set up a studio. He was down there tinkering around on guitar, and I came down and said, "What? What is that you're playing?" So I picked up a guitar, started playing some stuff. We started humming some melodies, and off we went. Pretty soon we had a song, and then we had another song, and then we had another song. <laughs> and all of a sudden it was like, wow, we, we have enough to release something. So, you know, we toyed with some band names and stuff, but then we just kind of went, hey, you know, I feel good enough about this. Let's, let's call it my solo album. Right, right. So just just some just some playing around in the basement, tinkering around, and boom, here you go. You got a ten 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 song solo album. Just doesn't work out better than that, does it? I know, and a lot of times that's the way it works out best. You right. Know, if you're not planning it, it just comes naturally, and that's what happened. Once we started to get on a roll, it was it was unstoppable. We were you know four o'clock in the morning. Oh, I got an idea. I got to go downstairs. It was just around the clock. It was cool. I mean, it wasn't until maybe like 50 to 60% into this thing that we were like, let's, let's do an album. Let's keep it going. It was just kind of, you know, just doing it for fun and getting that side of us out. Yeah. Well, you know, most most music does have, you know, it's most it's better organically than it is when you're under the pressure cooker and you've got people breathing down your neck going, give me a release. I need music. Give me a release. So that's why this, I've actually had the chance to listen to the album. I've been listening to it for the last couple of days, and that's probably why it has that uh, sound that it does, because it is natural. Nothing seems forced on this album. Yeah, I mean, that was really the beauty of it, too, is that we had no expectations there was really nothing that made us go you know we can't do that or we can't use that sound because you know it's, there was there was no restrictions at all and it, it really gave us some freedom to kind of experiment and sometimes things worked and sometimes they didn't and there was no studio time clock ticking you know money 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 or anything like that so we could go and spend three hours and accomplish nothing if we felt like it. Yeah, so it did, great. It didn't cost you a dime either, did it? <laughs> exactly. Just our time, and you know, and we love spending it doing what we do. So right, right. Great. All right, and now, and Justin, you know, for those that aren't familiar with you, you've been around the music uh, game for quite a while. Worked with some pretty well-known bands like Stan Collect a Soul and like that. Uh, what brought you guys together to get working? Um, you know, I'll clarify that real quick, too. I, I worked with members of Stain and Collectors, so I've kind of been like a hired gun. Right, right. You weren't actually listed in the bands. I apologize. You're correct. You're absolutely correct, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no problem. Um, you know, I think for us, what, what kind of really got this thing going is, um, you know, it's been so long, you know, for either of us to, to come up and, and do new, new, fresh music. And like I was getting it with the hired gun thing, and I was, for a long time, I've been just playing other people's stuff. So, you know, when we sat down and we, we, we did start to get into this and we were a couple songs and it was just so refreshing and felt so good to work on new music that I think we both had that fire in us and it was just itching to get out. Right on. Now, you know, um, like I said, um, both of you have been in the music industry. Jay, you've been in it a long time. Like you said, you guys are doing this yourselves. So you're just kicking it in the basement, having a good time. 
do you like this better than back in the day when you got started and you came up through the business and everything was so business oriented? How has it been different doing this solo album than what you did back in the day when you were doing all those albums with Vixen? Well, it's kind of apples and oranges. You know, working with a band is great because you get everybody's input. And when everything is working, you, you get a kind of magic that you can't get any other way than when you're all four or five or however many of you are in a room playing together. It's just there's a certain magic to it. So, you know, that's great, and I still want to do more of that. Um, but it's also great to not have to go through a committee on everything. Right. It's kind of you feel it, you do it, you put it down, and there it is. It doesn't have a lot of filtering, and so it's just, it's different, but, but both are great. Both are really, really satisfying. Right on, right on. Hey, if, if, but, you know, hey, if, you know, you're trying to be happy and doing what you love, and if you like both sides of it, it does give you more options to keep going, so that way it can really never get bored and everything can stay fresh, right? Exactly. Yeah. You, can, you can put your creativity um, in a number of different places pots and stir and see what happens <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely well, let's talk about this uh debut album you got coming out the solo album your guys really just came out and just kind of kicked people in the face with rat hole as the uh opening track to this album it's uh it's right there out there whose who's choice was it to set this line up and uh kind of you know just come at you with that punch like that well, before we even got signed to Pavement, we were leaning towards that. We thought, you know, let's just, let's just go out guns blazing. Right. And so that was our, our first instinct. And then once we got signed to Pavement, they listened to everything and they picked it too. So we knew it was right. We knew it was the way to come out of the gate. You know, our thing, my, of course, in the back of my mind, I thought, well, you know, it might be a little heavy to start with. But then we thought, no, you know, let's let's kick them in the teeth right away. Uh, it definitely grabs your attention because that's what I said. Today. I was like, holy shit, not yeah. holding <laughs> anything back here, are we? <laughs> no, 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 let, let it all loose. There is a heavy, one heavier song on the on the um, on this release, and that's the one that we think that people can get to and go, whoa, right. <laughs> Right, no, absolutely. Hey, you want to grab their attention and keep their attention, and that's definitely what you guys did coming out the gate there. So it was a good, good choice by everybody. Um, cool, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And now, I mean, you guys, like I said, with you guys writing these songs, you know, some I'm like, you know, a lot of these different songs have a lot, a lot of different meaning, and another one that really stuck out to me is Let It Be Over. It's kind of a very, uh, very powerful song with a lot, you know, that's... Uh, Kind of summing up the world that a little bit. So uh, how did how did that one come to be? Because that one that was another one that when I heard it that even that first time it was like holy shit this has a message a strong message to it. Yeah, you know we we definitely wanted to you know reach out to people that are a little less concerned about the latest adventures of the Kardashians. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> People who have little little deeper concerns in life, that song is is for them, which is which is us too. And I, you know, I don't like to preach, and I don't like to be overly political with things. But there are a few things that don't make any sense to us. Huh? We, just, we we have children, and and you think, God, what's it going to be like when they're our age, when they're adults, and they're kids, and you can't help but be concerned about a few things that don't make sense. And that if, if we could just everybody work together, we all want the same thing, sometimes it just doesn't make sense that we can't solve some of this stuff. That's all. All right. All right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, like I said, it, it's another one that just definitely, just right from that first time, caught my attention. It was like, wow, man. I mean, it's a good song. It's a great song. You know, it's, it's you know, a lot of times hopefully people hear these types of things and, you know, it sinks in. You know, it gets past that stupid block in their mind where they are just stuck into reality TV and all this bullshit that maybe if they're listening to some music it might sink in a little better. I don't know. So keep going. Yeah, that's, that's all we're trying to do is, is to maybe, you know, make people think a little bit more. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the, the whole the whole Sandy Hook thing 
happened about 10 miles away from where I live. My son was in school about 10 miles away from that school when that happened. Right. You know, and there there were some changes in the state of Connecticut, but it went away so fast. I was just blown away that people just kind of went, you know, it was in the news one day, and then and then it just sort of went away, and, and nothing really changed very much. Right. And, then, you know, and I'm thinking... You know, I got to take my son to school every day and drop him off and just hope to God that, you know, he's alive when I come to pick him up. Right. It's mind boggling to me. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody, absolutely. It's like, just like you said, you know, it gets the people build it up so quick, so fast. Everybody changes their Facebook profile picture to say, remember this. It lasts for two days. And then, like you said, it's gone. Nobody, it's, everybody forgets about it. You know, they think. Yeah, they're on you know, Kim Kardashian's butt cellulite or something. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, hey, I'm with you. I can't stand that shit. Honestly, when when I get home and my wife is watching that stuff, she either changes the channel or goes to another room with another TV because she knows that I just cannot stomach that crap at all. So, hey, I'm with you. <laughs> All right, grab somebody else yeah. who's it our way. Oh, no, I'm totally there. I just cannot do that garbage at all. So I'm with you 100% on that. So you said you guys were down in the basement tooling around on the guitars, made all the rows. So did you guys write the music first before you put some words to this, or did it kind of, once you realized what you were doing, did you kind of do it together, or how did you guys actually, you know, how this whole thing actually come together, you know, melody and words-wise? You know, most of the time, it, it would start out with the music part first. Um, there were occasions where there was an idea or a subject matter that, that we wanted to touch on. Um, but, yeah, most of the time it was one of the two of us coming up with, like, a main riff idea and then the other one joining in and adding their spin to it. And uh, and then the lyrics would come after that. Okay. Sort of, but, you know, in the case of the one you were talking about, Let It Be Over, right. I had that in my head. And, you know, I just sat down and started piling up vocals. Um, and then we added the, the music to it. So it was definitely melody first on that, melody and lyrics first. And then we just added what we thought. We just started building it from there. So it, it happens all different ways. Right on. No, hey, okay. exactly. And like I said... Somebody- Two different ideas. Like Justin had a riff idea, and I had a chorus with lyrics already, like um, the good or the by, and we just shoved them together, and it worked great. Right, and and like I said, you know, going back to earlier, talking about how this came came about organically. There's no pressure, no one breathing down your neck. That allows you to create differently, and you know, write it the way you want to, the way it comes to you. So that that also helps with the creation of your music. Absolutely, there was never that feeling of being under the gun for any reason. Yeah, nobody even knew about it, <laughs> so there was no pressure of it of any kind. Yeah, I think we we, we had to deal with pavement i think before we even announced it to anybody really so you guys just popped out of the you just popped out of the basement one day and said hey we got this let's go pretty much yeah and then you know we we thought well you know let's 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 try to release this but we don't know if we want to do it ourselves there were so many options it was it was great Right, and and you got to love that, and that must show that you know that you are putting out a great product. If here you are tinkering around, not really intending on anything, and then you present this product, and like you said, you had multitude of options to release it. So it's got to show you that you guys did a really good thing down there, huh? <laughs> yeah, it, it does feel good, and you know you're always your own worst critic. Right. So you- just never know how other people are going to react. It's like, well, did we make our point here? Do, are people going to feel something from this, and you just don't know what's going to move people. Right. So it's great to put it out there and have people respond. It feels amazing. Oh, yeah. Now, to bring up, you know, Bay Accent a little bit, you get, you actually did uh, did a small, you guys did a run here at the uh, beginning of this year, correct? Yeah, we, we do a lot of... Um, you know, festivals and fairs, kind of as they come up, we'll do little fly dates, we'll do short little runs, that kind of thing. Okay, is that something yeah, you're going to con- continue on doing, just whenever you guys can all get together and make it work out? 
Yeah, we have we have an agent that will put feelers out, find stuff for us, present it to us, and if we can all do it, we all hop on a plane and off we go. Oh. We have a lot coming up in August. Actually, we we have all every weekend in in August is booked. Really. <laughs> Yeah. Nice, nice. Now, you guys, uh, towards the end of that run, you guys added a uh, keyboard player, little long-haired Asian guy. Is he going to be playing around with you guys some more? Tyson, you betcha. We're going to, you know, we're not letting him go anywhere. We're going to tie him up, throw him in the airplane or on the bus or whatever, and he's coming along. I don't blame you. That guy <laughs> is one of the most talented musicians I know. I'm actually, I'm calling you from Kansas City, which is his, uh, former hometown before you guys sucked him down in there to Nashville. So, yeah, Tyson is an amazing, amazing artist and done a lot for this city up here in Kansas City. So I had to, I had to get that in there and see, how, see if we're going to still be seeing him on tour with you. Absolutely. He's a great guy. He's in demand, but, you know, we're, we're, trying, to, we're trying to hang on to him because uh, we're having a great time with him. He's, he's amazing. Good deal. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. He, he, he is a, really is a good dude. Really is. Well, guys, before I let you go finish on your days or anything you want to say to the fans, um, I do want to remind everybody needs to know you do actually have a uh, pre-order uh, deal that you guys are doing that you can get a uh, the signed CD and a T-shirt bundle if you can do the pre-order deal, correct? Correct, and we just finished signing a whole bunch of them. So. <laughs> right before this. And there's also a new one, too, that just popped up yesterday through uh, iTunes. If you pre-order the album on iTunes, you get an immediate download of Rat Hole now. Oh, nice. Nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Right on. So iTunes, download, get the uh, Rat Hole uh, immediately. Um, you can also pre-order and get the signed CD and T-shirt. Uh, tell everybody how to get a hold of you guys, where they can get the music, and then we'll let you get on your day. Yeah, right now you can uh, go to our Facebook page. It's just Janet Gardner. Pop that in on Facebook and you'll find us there. And um, it has all our tour dates. Come see us. And any links to, you know, anything that's coming up, you'll you'll find it on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Well, Janet and Justin, I greatly appreciate you guys taking out some time from your day today. And, uh... We look forward to uh, seeing you guys on the road. Maybe we can get uh, get a few more dates locked in there, get you through these neck of the woods. It'd be great to see you guys. Absolutely. Yeah, we'd, we'd love to. We'd love to. Yeah, they were talking about some stuff in your area, but nice. it didn't quite pan out yet. But, you know, they'll, he'll still keep keep the irons in the fire. Okay, key word is yet. Key word is yet. So. <laughs> All right. Exactly. All right, guys, you guys have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, bye-bye.